Good morning. Uh, today, the Committee on Standards and Ethics will be holding a second hearing on a vote for proposed intro number 735A that I am sponsoring in relation to the advisory opinions of the Conflicts of Interest Board and to repeal paragraph 4 of the Subdivision C of section 2603 in relation thereto. Um, before I go on, I just want to recognize the members that are here. We have Karen Kozowitz, Steve Levin, Margaret Chin, and Vanessa Gibson. And uh, we have Donovan and Costa just hanging out on our diet today. Um, as we discussed in our first hearing on this bill, the Conflicts of Interest Board has two powers relevant to this bill, the power to issue rules and the power to issue advisory opinions. Under the city charter, when interpreting the Conflicts of Interest Law generally or applying an interpretation broadly, a rule must be issued. When applying the Conflicts of Interest Law to the specific situation of one person, an advisory opinion can be used. Yet for at least the past decade, these powers have seemingly not been used in this manner. Instead, the board has tilted heavily towards the use of advisory opinions and the almost complete disuse of rules, even when rulemaking would be the correct power to use under the charter. There are many benefits to interpreting the law through rules rather than advisory opinions, and this bill seeks to reestablish that correct balance. As amended, proposed intro 735A would require the Conflicts of Interest Board to annually review the advisory opinions issued in the prior calendar year to see if any had interpretive value in construing the, the provisions of the Conflicts of Interest Law and either establish the standard or anticipated to be the subject of multi -fu multiple future requests. The board would then be required to initiate rulemaking to adopt any such opinion or part of an opinion. The bill also requires the board to review all the advisory opinions issued from 1990 to present for evaluation on the same criteria as I just mentioned and similarly to initiate rulemakings where relevant. This review is to be completed by May 1st, 2020, but the bill would not prohibit the adoption of any rules on those subjects after that date. Finally, the bill would require the inclusion of clarifying language in every advisory opinion, explaining that such advisory opinion applies only to the public servant or public servants upon whose request it was issued. This language is merely a restatement of the scope of the advisory opinion power under existing law in the city charter. I want to thank the members of this committee for their support on this issue. I also want to thank the Conflicts of Interest Board for engaging on the details of this bill with us. Even when there were fundamental disagreements, I believe the resulting bill was improved by their discussions. And I want to thank the staff who made this possible, Deputy General Counsel Serena Longley, Senior Legislative Counsel Brad Reed, Policy and Analyst Elizabeth Cronk, Rob Newman, and our General Counsel Jason Otano, as well as my Chief of Staff David Carr. Uh, did any members have any questions or comments? If, with that being said, I will now ask uh, our clerk, Billy Martin, to call the roll. Billy Martin, committee clerk, roll call vote, committee on standards and ethics, introduction 735A, Chair Matteo. Aye. Gibson. Aye. Chin. Aye. Kozlowitz. Aye. Levin. Aye. I vote a five in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstention. Item has been adopted by the committee. Excellent. Very good. And I will now uh, end this Committee on Standards and Ethics.